This week's episode of Comics for Fun and Profit is brought to you by Marvel Pricing. Yeah, it was $3.99 for a little while. Now it's $4.99 for some things. But do you think you've got us figured out? Oh no. It's also $5.99 sometimes. But don't don't get too comfortable. Sometimes it'll be $6.99, maybe $7.99. There's no reason. Well, there's a quote-unquote anniversary issue, maybe, or, you know, an extra-sized issue, which is like five more pages. You know, let's stop messing around. We all know we're going to go straight to nine ninety nine, and there's nothing you can do about it. Because we'll do what we want, okay? So just buy the comic and shut your mouth. We're Marvel! Are you missing six-man co-host Mike Myers? Well, you don't have to. Go to dcnoisepodcast.com and explore all of Mike's podcast universe, including my favorite, Mike M's Weekly Reads, to stay up to date with Mike's personal reading list. you got Geek Brunch, a bi-weekly cl- celebration of geek culture with Mike and Bill Bomer, where they dish about comics, movies, TVs, and even food sometimes. you got DC Noise, focusing on Mike's favorite publisher, DC, Collector's Corner, DC Everything Else, another favorite of mine, and Geek Brunch Retro. So feel free to go find Mike at dcnoisepodcast.com. The good folks at Comics for Fun and Profit have been doing two episodes a week um, for quite some time now, and it's all thanks to, first of all, Jason, and second of all, our patrons, who allow us to add the space on our server Broadcast more, store more, share more with you listeners. I'm envious of those of you who have unlimited storage and media server capabilities. We we pay for ours here at, at the C4FAP. It ain't cheap. We thank you so much for those of you who go to patreon.com slash comicsfunprofit and contribute at any level to say thanks, to say... I want to be a part of your Slack channel conversations. I want to get exclusives. I want to get early access. I want to get ad-free access. I want to get swag. I want to get some free stuff. Whatever your reasoning is, we appreciate it at any level because it does make a difference. So from the bottom of Kyle and I and Jason's heart, thank you for contributing. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle Andrew with your sneak peek at next week. Episode number 912 for comics originally releasing. Oh boy, we are into June. June 4th and June 5th. The year's halfway over, Drew. But before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shop this coming Tuesday and Wednesday, how we doing, Drew? What's going on in the world of comic books? Yeah, not to be a Debbie Downer about things. Oh, but... no. Yeah, you remember my friend of the show ed pisker that passed uh yes i do i do i do um well in his last will and testament suicide note he asked um jim rugg to release all the remaining uh oh, episodes yeah. release all the episodes. yeah 100 percent. and then and then um and to release all the patreon only episodes ah and so those have been some rabbit holes, man, because those are five to six hour live streams on them, chatting, shooting the shit, talking, uh, leading up to recording like an episode on Wizard Magazine or something, right? And uh, so th- that was like a, it was, it was kind of a behind the scenes chit chat and um been fascinating i don't i don't have a lot of time for five hour podcasts <laughs> so i'd like kind of come in and out like turn it on and then go do something and walk back in and then pick up part of the conversation and stuff but um if you kind of like put kayfabe cartoonist kayfabe youtube channel out of your m- mind assuming it was over there's some interesting content coming out now so that is this patreon only stuff and some of it will have dates from last year because I think that's when they started it. You know, mm-hmm. so it'll look dated, but it's actually a new release for us yeah. on the general release. So um been been kind of fascinating. Um interesting rabbit hole to go down for sure. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. 
What's happening in your world? Um, I've I have enough tangential people saying, uh, "Hey, X Men ninety seven, this. Hey, X Men ninety seven, this." That I am going to take the time and go through X Men ninety seven, and I will do a full review on that. I thought you already finished it or already watching half of it. I watched the first one. Oh, you just was like, "Cool, one. I'll Very get to cool. this." And Very then cool. now I'm now I'm now I'm jumping through because it wasn't it wasn't everything the same. We really kind of owe the listeners a um a fallout. Oh yeah, them, don't we? Hundred percent. Yeah, the Patreon folks, we owe yeah. them a fallout. Yeah, let's let's do. We're gonna we're gonna in honor of Ed Pisker, we're gonna make sure we have when we finally <laughs> kick this mortal coil. There'll be something. <laughs> there will the be vault. something to release. Absolutely. Yeah, be, no one will know the passwords. <laughs> They'll go down with me. Yeah. And, uh, no, I'll, I'll have no backup. There you will no have left backup. a wonderful note. My brother will release, and your brother will not. Will forget. Yeah, my brother will have no idea how to get in there and do any of that. So <laughs> this this will die there. Uh, that's depressing. <laughs> well. Hell. So yeah, we got we got plans to see Deadpool. We got plans to watch X Men ninety seven. We will do a yeah. Fallout and uh, maybe yeah. some other fun stuff. Uh, um, John Mayer, who I used to podcast with too, over at mm-hmm. Comic Book Page, he had uh, was having a conversation about this that like he was going to put together like a trust or something to pay his server fees in perpetuity or long enough so that his <laughs> so that his my website, legacy shall live on. Well, yeah, like the website and uh, mm-hmm. that content and it's his server as well for his podcast. So it would li- it like if if he stops paying for his server for his server fees on his website, well, there goes all the episodes, right? They're gone. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they're on an internet archive somewhere, but um yeah. I just, I was, I mean, that's exact, that's the exact same thing for me too, right? Like we have 912 episodes mm-hmm. and, um, when I stop payment on, uh, the server fees, they'll just be shuttered, right? That's a great question. I Eventually mean, they'll just, they'll just die because, um, yeah, I mean, I think maybe instantly, right? Because <laughs> even the ones that are. Yeah, unless they're cached in, in any yeah. way for a short amount of time. So I really need to start porting those over to a YouTube page mm-hmm. um, so that they they live there forever. Um, damn, that's going to be a lot of work. Who wants to <laughs> see if, is help wanted well, an intern to <laughs> an internship, 912 absolutely. episodes over to the YouTube site um, to live on in perpetuity after Kyle and I kick off. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, anyway, let's talk good stuff, fun stuff. Let's talk Marvel. Nope. Let's head over to our good friends at comicbook.com and look at our it. hot 10. 912 episodes. Did people. we used to do it this way? Did we used to? No, we did have our uh, uh, FOC. So once we, oh, we stopped the doing FOC, FOC the yeah, we yes. had to reconnoiter. And this is our reconnoiter, which I've caught on to fairly well. You caught on very quickly. <laughs> It's this weird thing where when we begin the show, I put the tabs in the order that we do them. They're in my, they're in there. They're in the huh. correct order. But I still okay. jumped the gun and said, you know what? I don't think that's correct. <laughs> I'll just, I'll come right over there. You're oh, such man. an excited bear. <laughs> I am heading over to my good friends at comicbookinvest.com and finding their hot ten list for May the thirty first, two thousand and twenty four. Starting with their number one book, Doom. Number one by Jonathan Hickman and art by Samford Green. This was a repeat at the top from last week. Yep. What can I tell you? But people are still buying this Doom book. Didn't realize there were so many Doom fans out there. Wow. It's probably a mix of reasons from a decent story, pop culture references, and pop character and popular character keeping this one selling. We spotted over 200 sales this week, averaging wow. $30. High rolls of 50 bucks, which are all slightly up from last week, which is why it is a repeat number one during these slow. That's summer. pretty cool. Um, that I, is I awesome. read that. I read that book. It was. And it didn't pop to you like this is the next big thing? I mean, no, I mean, I I read it and I thought, well, that's pretty good. It was more Valeria, mm-hmm. um, a lot of Galactus in there, you know, than Doom. But 
it was good, uh, but there I didn't know. No, I didn't see 200 moving, and it being uh, Raw's going for 50 bucks. No. <laughs> At rank two, we have X Men 97, number two, the second print of X Men 97, number two. We mentioned it was a slow week, and here we have yet another repeat from last week. Moving up the list, still like this cover, and this seems to be the reason why the second print is moving. With over 150 sales, still averaging about $15, this did hit a new high of $30 for Raw. But mostly volume is why it's on this week. Yeah, you do that with 150 sales. You would um, think. Yeah, no kidding. At rank three, we have Blood Hunt, the Red Band Edition. Number one, Jed McKay and Pepe Larraz. No, this is not the one in 25 incentive, but the regular polybag edition of the Red Band first issue. Volumes remain steady with another 40 or more sales this week, but this has gone from cover price to averaging about $15. This even hit a, a high of $20 and set both issues one and two Red Band editions are also moving well at $25 to $30. So that's good. Yeah, the Red Band and... So that's not, that's not, okay, so that was not our choice, our pick. That was, because we picked two, right? So this is still yeah. issue one. Okay. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is issue one. <laughs> and at rank four, Doom number one, but this time the Audi Granov uh, cover. A rising tide on a slow week brings this open order variant to the list. Yes, double Doom in the top 10 this week, as there were more than 80 sales of this cover, which was only about $10 last week and is now averaging 20 bucks. This even hit a high of $30 as it replaces the virgin version from last week, which has cooled off a bit from the early spikes. So Doom is doing it. At rank five, Uncanny X-Men 266. This is the old Chris Claremont, Andy Kubert book. This is the one we, we talk about Gambit's first appearance quote unquote gambit is back <laughs> on the list in what appears to be a combination of more rumors of live action channing tatum appearing in deadpool 3 along with carryover heat from x-men 97 it seems the market is pivoting back towards the popular cover of this character while this always has steady sales there was a spike to over 40 this week with rawls ranging anywhere between 100 and 150 depending on condition for one reason or another a cdc 9.6 sale doubled this week with a, over a dozen sales uh, alone, averaging two hundred and forty dollars, forty-five dollars, with the highest hitting three hundred bucks. I don't, I don't. Why are they calling this a down week when there's when they've got comics that are selling two hundred yeah. copies, one hundred and fifty exactly. copies? That seems like we what got you want. Forty copies of this thing selling. Uh, hmm. I don't know, man. Doesn't yeah. seem like a down week to me. Yeah, I completely agree. X Factor Twenty Four is our sixth rank book. More X-Men 97 Season 2 look ahead, heat spreading, and many look at issue 19 with the first appearance of the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, but those seem tepid at ten or 5 to $10 when compared to the $25 average on about 30 sales on this X-Men X-Factor 24. While Archangel has already appeared on the show as a Horseman, I'm not sure why the rush to this book. But there was an outlier sale of a shelf, a self-described raw 9.9 .9 that accepted a best offer of an astounding $280. It looked like a nice copy, but 9.9 .9 is a pretty tall order there, Nordberg. I am also self-described my collection, and they're all raw 9.9s. 9 .9, <laughs> yeah, so right. I'd just like you to know. Just FYI, pay that premium. Mad Max Fury Road, Furiosa, number one. Remember this book, Drew? Yeah, yeah. While I the do. movie may have underperformed at the box office, it still see it got great reviews and folks seem to be turning back to this one shot comic. With more than thirty sales this week, averaging twenty to twenty five dollars raw, we'll see if this rough out tanks the larger Mad Max movie universe or they still push forward. Either way, maybe we'll get more comics if these continue to sell well. I wonder why it didn't do well, because the first movie was so good. Yeah, they said this was the lowest Memorial Day week for a while. What's going on? I mean, I didn't go, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> I can't be the problem. That's right. At rank eight, Godzilla 70th anniversary number one, the one in 50 Arthur Adams cover. Another repeat from last week. But with these prices, these books are earning their keep at the top spot. It only, It's only this low on the list because the volumes are still pretty low on this tough-to-find book. 
But with another half dozen sales and averaging $320, if you exclude a damaged copy, this still managed to get almost 150 bucks, as well as a new high of 430 for Rawls. I thought we already hit the ceiling, but this one is just continuing to climb. 430, Jesus. That's crazy. That's nuts. Edge of Spider-Verse number four, the one in 50 W. Scott Forbes cover. Not only a slow week, stop saying that on the aftermarket, <laughs> but an elated slow week with the new release, as an, as is normally the case on the fifth week of the month. But we still had the standout incentive this week, sneaking in at the bottom of the list, averaging 60 to $80, only half a dozen sales or so, so this that's week. slow. Okay. That that's slow, slow yeah. Okay. It is still an impressive start for this pretty bird. Yeah. If you've got a non-double ratio with only half a dozen sales, that's slow. But everything yeah. else is booming, baby. Yeah. At rank 10, we've got Sonic the Hedgehog, number 69. Kiggity, one in 10. This one surprised me, as this is the issue before we were, we are to get a new first appearance of the Sonic universe. But this one still is moving above ratio at about $15, even hitting $20 on this one in 10 retailer incentive. Again, watch out for next month's Sonic as we get the new Masked Rider showing up in the series' 70th edition. So would he be in a game then at some point, this Masked Rider? I don't know. Uh, Sega is, is not doing a ton. Yeah. Okay. So, Interesting. You know. Notable sales around the world. Danger Girl number two, Platinum, the J. Scott Campbell covered, appears all the hoopla over JSC's. A sentient number two cover has been spreading to some of his other harder to find covers. I myself sold one of his Kickstarter covers for the series Rich last for the series Rich last week for a decent amount, but this limited to 1500 platinum foil variant has been a popular book this week. That said, this recent CGC 9.8 sale of over $1,100 is still an all-time high on this book. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Good old J. Scott Campbell. People love him. Yeah. And I see why. And other notable sales. We have Catman Comics, number 31, an L.B. Cole cover. Speaking of all-time high sales, we had another of this lesser-known L.B. Cole cover for Catman, which had a, a CGC 4.5, sell for a solid $2,640. All golden age seem to be on the rise these days, as it doesn't have to be a key for new high watermarks to be set seemingly every doggone week. I should have just gobbled up all 10 cent books I could find. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Uh, I would have been okay. But I didn't. <laughs> it would have panned out in the end with just one that kicks. Yeah. Now, Kyle, <laughs> can we go to Marvel's previews? Since you, you've been asking and salivating. Yeah. Now, see, I, I was talking it. to Kyle offline a little bit about this because we. he said it's, it's the Marvel previews. Yes. And I said, no, it's not the Marvel previews because it's at PRH now. It's Penguin Random House now. So he said, no, it's still the Marvel preview. So we looked and it kind of is. So it kind of is. It kind of isn't. It says it says it's the it's Marvel free previews off to the side. So the word previews is still in there. But of course, previews world is no longer a part of this. So. Do you still call it the Marvel previews? 100%. This is the Marvel previews and starting at page number one. <laughs> Get all of our own stuff. And the big thing that pops out, uncanny X-Men number one, Gal Simone and David Marquez. More X-Men keeping the dream alive. A core group of essential X-Men rise from the ashes to face a world without a home and without Professor X. Six so is this true. a good story? Jumping on point for those of us who have been around away from X, X-Men for a while. Maybe. I would say we're out of Krakoa and this is a good place to just be with the X-Men. Yeah. This is yeah. Really good so hop start. on, check it out. See if you like X-Men and sketchy preview pages. That's good. Those are pretty bad. <laughs> and we have... Wolverine Revenge, number one of a five issue series. Oh my goodness, Jonathan Hickman and Greg Capullo on art for Wolverine. Can't beat that. We got art germ variants, Paulo Villalobos variants, uh, Mark Brooks variants, all kinds of good stuff there. That John Yang is pretty wicked 
cover too. Yeah. Yeah. We also have a red band edition with the popularity of the red band editions for a blood hunt. You know, if Marvel even thinks they tap a nerve, we are getting red band everything coming soon. I think you got to go with the Capullo cover, though. I mean, when's the last time he was doing covers? Yeah, doing covers on Marvel stuff. Been a while. I love it. Is he doing interiors, too? Yeah, he's the he's the the OG artist in this. Wow. Yeah. Might have to read it then. <laughs> yeah. But Dan yeah. Nakayama's pretty nice too. Nice too. X Factor number one, Mark Russell and Bob Quinn on art. I'm not familiar with Bob Quinn, but. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what I am familiar with, Drew. Bob Q, Quinn, right? But... Is that the same? That's the same guy that was doing work over Dynamite that I loved. That's Is that, that the same guy. Correct? Maybe. Um, and uh, just FYI, Drew, uh, window shades are still a thing. <laughs> no yeah. way. So Mark Russell writing X Factor. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a non-satirical book, I guess. It's going to be straightforward Mark Russell writing. Okay. It seems that way. Um, I will... I think I gotta read this. I gotta see. I, I, got, I, I think I'm three, three for, for two, three. baby. I am three, baby. three for three so far. Uh, I might have to read this as well. All right, heading on down, we have X Men number two, and this is of course Weapon Extraction, Jed McKay's book, right? Segment on art, and another dope magic variant with J. Scott Campbell. So what was the what was the one at the beginning? That was uncanny. That was uncanny. Yeah. Uh, and this is just standard okay man are you going to be reading two x-men books true uh, that's jed mckay i probably i i think i probably w- promised that i would read the first one of that one too yeah so yeah and it's I shipping guess... again we get two and three this month so that's four x books right off the top that i'm reading and we get avengers 17 also written by jed mckay who is just just doing work man yeah. And it, again, this is part of that weapon extraction, so I, I think he's running over and doing some additional things mm-hmm. for that. X Force, I'm out. I'm yeah, we, we got a swing and a miss finally. But then I'll probably back with NYX. If yeah. That's if that's my girl Laura. Yeah, Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing with a older uh, version of our girl. Phoenix, number two. Back out. <laughs> yep. Deadpool team up number one, written and art by Rob Liefeld. I'm okay. hoping these are new. <clears throat> okay. Basically, this is what I assume the movie's going to be. Yeah. Just a bunch of team ups. Yeah. Rob Liefeld weaves an epic tale, bringing Wade Wilson together with Major X, Chris Starr. Ghost Spider, Wolverine, and Incredible Hulk for the first time, as the return of a lost Marvel Comics character necessitates the ultimate team-up mission. Nice. Not too shabby. Yeah. Deadpool 5, just continuing that, you know, we've got a bunch of Deadpool variants. This is going to be the, you know, we've got Deadpool for a while, because this, this is the big movie they're hanging their head on. Yeah, lots of Deadpool. As they should. Wolverine Deep Cut number two. Chris Claremont writing this. Logan versus the Marauders. Well, there's this comic that we just were talking about. Uncanny X-Men 266 facsimile. A new yeah. printing for the facsimile of the 1981 X-Men 266. So don't pay quote 200 unquote, bucks. Pay this. Quote, unquote, Gambit's first appearance. <laughs> I don't think they have it in quotes. I'm quoting it because we are here to edify the the people. Uh huh. Predator. But we don't really agree with that. You, you and I never agree with it. <laughs> Predator versus Black Panther. We've got the Predator in Wakanda. Benjamin okay. Percy, Chris Allen. You know, um, I probably would have poo pooed this in my in my past, yeah. but I've read a lot of good Predator lately, so I can't hate this right out of the gate. We're keeping an open mind. Yeah. Ultraman Cross Avengers number one. My boy Kyle Higgins and Matt Grom writing. Yeah. So that's cool. 
I'm not reading that though. <laughs> the greatest hero of Japan and Earth's mightiest heroes join forces for an epic adventure. So it looks like we got a couple of Venoms fighting to the death. Yeah, how you and Ebon Coelho. Venom War, number one of a five issue series. Last Venom standing. So, do we so, have to buy these in case we get the a new character like we did out of is Edge Dylan of Spider-verse? Brock Eddie Brock's kid, or is it the other way around? Is Eddie Brock Dylan Brock's kid, or are they brothers, or are they no relation? So, the Venom symbiote, symbiote has bonded with both Eddie Brock and his son Dylan. And son Dylan. Yep. Okay. And so I wonder who we're rooting for. Are they now both, both, are they both... Are going head to head, determined to be the one true Venom father versus son in a showdown of showdowns that threatens to tell the one, world. One's a good Venom. Venom and the other's a bad Venom? Or they're both the same I think Venom? they're both flawed Venoms. <laughs> okay. Okay, Kyle. Now look at that. We got a cover by Chris. Gear Russo, and what style mm-hmm. would you say that is? Horrible. <laughs> uh, like something it's like, your kid might do? Yeah, it's just like, hey, let's take Scotty Young's, but do him um, shitty. <laughs> Not stylized enough to be Scotty Young, no. but kind of youth. Yeah, just let's make him Saturday morning cartoon is what they're doing. Yeah, gotcha. I don't, I don't like it. it. I don't like it. But I do like the internals, and those make me happy. So, uh, Ibon Coelho? Yeah, are they look pretty well. good. Yep, it's very well done. Venom War, Venomous, number one. This is a three-issue series. Black Widow and her newly trained symbiote are jumping into the Venom War. Wow. We're really leaning into this. Yeah, I don't we keep, we're not done yet, brother. Zombie. Yeah, zombiotes. Not so what? You get a zombie and a symbiote, and everybody's happy. Oh, two venoms. A darker strain of symbiote has slithered across New York City. One that can reanimate the dead Whoa. and turn the living into an engine of mindless hunger with just one bite. Zombie symbiotes making zim- symbiote zombies. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Teeth everywhere. Yeah. And now we have Venom War Carnage number one. As Dylan and Meridius rally their troops, Carnage has plans of his own. Is uh, Who is this Spider-Man Venom War? Who is this Spider-Man supposed to be? I don't know, but he's happy grin on his to face, be though. here. He's yeah. really. This is Peter Parker, Spider Man, I guess. Okay. That is an awesome. Venom War, Spider Man, number one of four. Yeah. Spider Man in black. That's a Greg Land cover. So, you know, that was Lightbox off something. Yeah. Or AI. Yeah. Okay. I like this Venom 36. Oh, um, great homage. Great homage cover there. Dude, Venom War that? rages on. Spidey 29? 129? Yeah. It's very cool. Venom vs. Reborn, three of four. The Jerry Dugans, Steve Fox, Ryan North, Al My Ewing written tiny. God, Hill. Kyle, this is getting redundant. I'm, I'm already burnt out on Venom and I haven't read a book. The D- Department of Redundancy Department. Yeah. Holy okay. smokes. Now we're back into Blood Hunter. <laughs> Blood Hunter's number one of a five issue series. <laughs> so okay. Blood Hunt will never die. Could have swore this was already out. Don't miss the beginning of an epic new adventure. <laughs> All right. All right. Werewolf by Night, Red Band number one. Uh, Jason Liu writing this book. Sergio Davila on art. Is this the same Werewolf by Night that we had before and they just red banded it? Or is this a Jack new Jack Russell has one? been trying to live as a... Uh, uh, yeah, it, must be, it must be new, right? Yeah, probably. Well, that look, cover looks similar. It's coming from the wake of Blood Hunt, so yeah. Okay, so it's new. 
Spider Society number one, Drew. We have a whole society of spiders. Every spider character you love and some you haven't met yet. Shocker, we're launching more spiders, Drew. Oh, my gosh. Five bucks, four-issue series, art germ covers. Every spider person will be in the same room for the most crazy meeting the multiverse has ever seen. Spider Society. Oh, there are some new new pictures on it. We might I see a cat spider. I see a backwards hat spider. I see a guy on a horse spider. I do not see the backwards hat spider. Where's that? He is above OG spider. Oh, yep, yeah, there he is back there. Yep. Yeah, the craven spider. Yeah. Wow. All right. Fine. <laughs> Spider-Man, Black Suit, and Blood. We ran out of three colors. We're just renaming uh, things. The rumors are true. Greg Land maybe did a nice-looking MJ. I can't not a tell. Bad. It's not a bad mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Probably was, it was probably <laughs> Jay Scott Gamble. Yep. <laughs> Written by J.M. DeMatteis, J. Michael Straczynski, and J. Dustin Nguyen. <laughs> 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 really, there's not a, a J in there, is there? <laughs> I added it. You added it? Okay. It's like, what? No way. I'm so gullible. <laughs> and all agey stuff. It's Spidey time. $4. <laughs> okay. And then we transfer right into Chasm, Curse of Cain, number one. Oh, we got the worst one spider single, ever. One single kitty book and then back to all right i'm guessing well okay so kane parker is on a mission to track down his fellow clone ben Parker. god the clone series was the worst thing ever and we're still playing with it yeah you really you really uh, hate okay hate ben riley yeah you hate it a lot spider-man rain number spider-man rain series two number two of five old man peter returns so he gets a wizard's beard okay iron fist 50th anniversary special celebrating 50 years of the immortal protector of kunlun yeah that is so phoned in except for the david aha variant holy crap i want it I haven't got there yet. Where's that at? Page 49 physical, page 51 digital. Top one. Oh, oh, there it is. I'm, I went right by it. Oh, that is, that's nice. We get a David Aha cover. We get a Kevin Eastman cover and a Howard Chaikin cover. Yeah, very retro. That's awesome. Ultimate Black Panther 7. The series still good, brother? Uh, I, I dropped it. I dropped all of them except for Ultimate Spider Man. Ultimates number three. Uh, I might, I might have read the, f- yeah, I read the first one of Ultimates and then didn't hate it, so I might read two. There you go. Ultimate X Men number six. My Dropped. girl Peach Momoko. Trad Moore variant. Ultimate Spider Man eight. Kingpin's Sinister Six. And it's pretty good still. Daredevil Woman Without Fear two hundred four. Erica Schultz writing that one. Namor, two of eight. We have a tiny girl on the cover. Wolverine, annual number one. Ezra Clayton Daniels writing that one. The field, the R, Cinar. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for taking that one. And Sarah Pichelli. <clears throat> Incredible Hulk, annual number one. Has Thanos versus the Incredible Hulk. I like that. Amazing Spider-Man 55. Zeb Wells writing now. Took us a while to get to ASM. Mm-hmm. We have... Oh, holy crap. And then Amazing Spider-Man 56, Legacy 950. So, Drew, without looking, how much is issue 55? I already looked. It's eight. 55 is $5. And then because we have Legacy 950, we've shot it to an $8 book. Boy, added, Marvel going to Marvel. We added 20 pages. Marvel gonna marvel. <laughs> they're, they're, like, well, I mean, what what are we gonna do at thousand? What are oh, we gonna do? Not forty six dollars. I mean, at two a month, we're not that far away, right? No, we're not. 
a year or two, if that. Yeah. Sometimes three a month. It just it seemed like we just did seven hundred. Oh wait, isn't okay? So, all right. So legacy sometimes is legacy of all the characters' books that they've had, and sometimes it's legacy for that book named book in particular that started and stopped. So in this case, it's amazing Spider-Man's ASM legacy. All of it, 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 but it's, but it doesn't include web of or Spider-Man or any of the other titles, right? Correct. Correct. This is just the amazing book, which is funny because like Nightwing had a couple of different iterations to get to 300 or 200 or whatever it was for legacy. And I think like she hulk did the same thing so it's funny how they do that right i guess whatever you, whatever marvel guess, has to do to get eight bucks a book because can you imagine if you did like a collective legacy of all batman <laughs> books what would that number be I'm, I'm sure if we looked harder under the meta microscope yes it would but be yeah. like it have to be like five thousand, right yeah like bat books in general yeah super legacy yeah Miles Morales, Spider-Man, annual number one. Cody Ziegler, Curtis Baker on this one. Okay. Kyle. Vamos a San Juan. So 50, in 50 issues, we're going to have issue 1,000 mm-hmm. for Spider-Man. So it's going to go over nine ninety nine, right? Yo, It'll be a $15 yeah. book. It'll be a $15 book. It'll be a 15 But we're adding 42 pages. Da, da, da. I think it might be a $15 book. Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 23, the vulture out for blood. Spider-Gwen, the ghost spider number four. Whoa. Start. That is a, go- a dope cover by Mark, Mark Brooks. Mark Brooks ripping her face off. Yeah. Spider-Boy 10, my boy Dan Slott. Spider-Boy meets Spider-Warriors. Venom, we got another Venom that didn't make it into the other Venoms. Venom <laughs> didn't separation make it the anxiety, four or, or five. A Venom <laughs> not like any other. I thought you were saying separation anxiety because it wasn't with the others, but that's actually <laughs> yeah. the name of the book. The, the, yeah. Irony. <laughs> Spider-Woman 10. The Spectacular Spider-Men number six. We are back to weapon extraction, but we didn't put it with the other weapon extractions. Ooh, interesting. Uh, we now have an ex- uh, a facsimile for 259, which we didn't put with the other facsimiles. We finally have this Secret Wars that everybody actually wants in black suited eight. Yeah, that should for sell a ton bucks. of copies. Yeah, that, that should, should be the one to have. And now we have giant size Thor number one by Al Ewing, guest starring Hercules. Hey, Fantastic Four is still around. Hey, yeah, Alex Ross covers. Fantastic Four is recovering from Blood Hunt, just FYI. And we have Fantastic Four 24 as well. We're double shipping. There Incredible are Disco Hulk Dazzler variants for these books, too. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. I'm in. I don't know which one it is. I don't think we see it. There, yeah, but I mean, there is a Disco. Yeah. A Disco Dazzler. Incredible Hulk 15, the origin of evil. We look like we have a Loki Hulk almost on the front, but. Yeah. We also get that double shit. Incredible Hulk 16. Moon Knight. Vengeance of the Moon Knight number eight. And then we are launching a new Moon Knight called Phases of the Moon Knight. And that's Ben Piercy. And so this is going to be what? Like different moon night people over the years illuminating lost lunar lore th- though Before he is a monster yeah. so we haven't we haven't decided we're going to bring him back yet i guess we're milking other things but hey we're still putting some stuff into moon night so that's pretty cool yeah i mean <clears throat> having two moon night comics running and mark specter is not in either one of them that's interesting I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, in a million years. Scarlet Witch 3. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. It rebooted. Yeah. Steve Orlando writing it. Marvel 85th anniversary special celebrating Marvel's 50,000th comic <laughs> book release. We there. were just talking about aggregating all of the books and where would yeah. we be? There we go. Marvel In the far 50, future of the year 50,000, the exploits of the heroes of the Marvel Age are the stuff of legends, half remembered but still celebrated. Come with us now on a tour of the greatest museums of all the cosmos in which the new surviving relics of these bygone days have been assembled. So somebody just, you know, got a spreadsheet, Mm -hmm. (laughs) auto-summed the hell out of it, and said, hey, you know, if you add up all our comics over time, we did 50,000. Do you believe it, Kyle? Do you believe it's an accurate number? Yes, I'm going to audit them. I mean, who's going to be able to fact check this? No one. (laughs) Not I. No one can fact check this. You know who would be able to fact check it? Doctor Strange with his 18th episode issue. Again, <laughs> written by Jed McKay, because he's doing everything. He is. Immortal Thor 14 by Yao Ewing. Captain American 12, written by your boy J. Michael Straczynski and Jesus Siaz on art. Daredevil 12. Saladin Ahmed. Helverine 4, the end of the four issues of Helverine, written by Pell, by uh, Ben Percy. But this is, of course, Helverine versus Wolverine. Get Fury 4 of 6. Garth Ennis writing that. Forgot about that. Ghost Rider Final Vengeance number 6. That's being phoned in. And we are into our Star Wars with Star Wars Ahsoka number two. And we think this is just a retread fly. of the series. What do you think of that yellow fly cover? Not bad. Like a painted. Yeah, I actually really like that. It's going to be tough to get a 9.8 on, but I really like that. Yeah, it's pretty nice. For Star series, Wars, we don't think should exist. Comic book wise, yeah. If you're going to retread a show that everybody watched, don't just. Don't. Don't. Just don't. don't write. Just freaking write things. Yeah. I mean, use your brain. Yeah. Star Wars Inquisitors 2 of 4. At least this is new. Yeah. Star Wars Darth Vader 49 as we head towards Darth Vader 50 and Star Wars 49 as we head to Star Wars 50. Hopefully they do something cool when they hit 50 and it's not, I mean, not like cool like 8. Eight dollar book, cool, but just never mind. <laughs> no, that. that's what they're gonna do. Phase three of Star Wars: The Higher Republic has its tenth issue, and then fifty one will be a new number one. Yes. Talk about our good friends in the Stormbreakers of our arts. Who can keep track of these High Republic yeah. phases? I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Micronauts. I have this OG cover. So I'm, not, I'm not sure we're doing interesting. And we're into the collected editions. Drew, anything you want to suss out of the collected editions? Because I, Venom has taken everything out of me. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm a little weak. And there's still 40 more pages of collected editions. But I, I do want to... I mean, I got at least glance. Oh, and that's well, that's what they pay us for, Kyle. I mean, they don't get they don't pay us to you know. I would stop. like a raise. We are on digital one hundred. Uh, yeah, I know. <clears throat> hmm. I'm getting there. I'm a, I'm on one ten. I'm not, and I'm still a little werewolf by night. I have given up, and I'm gnawing on a chicken wing. <laughs> I think the listeners appreciate that you wait to eat. I'm muted, I'm muted, I'm muted. Aliens. Lots of aliens. I would recommend aliens to folks. You should pick up those trades if you have it. They're good. Worth the money? Mm, trades are affordable. Yeah, it's oh, an $18 that's, trade. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not, that's not awful. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I still got eight pages left. Hold on. 
Moon Knight uh, epic collection, the trial of Mark Spector, who no longer exists. Some power pack. That I can get behind. I think that holds up after all these times. Not well. Probably not well. Right? Kids in pajamas, it's weird. So yeah, the, the last couple of pages are just rehashes of the big two books. Some of the some of the big books that were in there. But Marvel coming out the great strong with four Drew books straight out of the gate. Yeah, gotta read back it, gotta to read it, back, gotta read it. Yeah, to back to back to back. Yeah. So who would have thunk it, right? Good on you, Marvel. As much as we complained about all the venomization, yeah, you knocked out some. Um, and now we are over at our good friend's cover price. Yeah, let's head on over and look at cover prices. Top 10 for May 27th, 2024. And the number one book is, of course, X-Men 97, number two. That second print we talked about, um, selling 88 copies. X-Men 97 was a crucial step in the reintroduction of the X-Men. The MA8 series debuted to positive reception from fans and from critics. Every episode left us on a cliffhanger, anticipating the next episode's release in the following week. However, no episodes left us needing more than episode 5's attack on Genosha. The episode had many twists and turns, but none left us more at the edge of our seats than Gambit's noble sacrifice. This cover is an incredible tribute to that moment as we see, we see a fading Gambit saying his goodbye to Rogue as he fades away. Fans of the series were waiting for this cover to drop. Given the number of books that moved on the aftermarket this week, it is clear how many collectors love that story. And we track those 88 copies. $19 for Near Mint Rye. Raw. And 11 bucks if you're looking for deals. Of course, Doom number one. We talked about the the joys of that Doom book. 206 of those move. High sale of $50 for a raw on that Doom book. And 35 bucks fair market value. We think slabs are going to be 9.8 at 130 bucks. It's going to set that market. It's crazy. Wow. Is that like pre-ordered? Yeah, yeah I think that's there. Their their pre order guesstimation or whatnot at rank wow. three New Mutants ninety eight in Hyuk Lee's twenty twenty four facsimile one in twenty five thirty six copies um fifty nine dollars for near mint rolls and you're not getting for much cheaper than fifty six bucks on this so that's cool that they did that one in twenty five New Mutants ninety eight facsimile I like that in Hyuk Lee cover. Very cool. Especially if you can't afford the grand, the the uh, actual one goes to. But, huh? Red Band Edition number two, Logan Lubera, Crime Suspense Stories number 16, Homage. It's the one in 25 ratio, Drew. 47 copies on the secondary market. This book had a near mint raw fair market value of $188. Wolverine wow. is the perfect Marvel hero to step into this homage cover. 47 copies of this drew high sale of $275. And that's the one um, that was my pick, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, this is these red band trailers have been crazy. The first, the first issue retailer incentive. That was my first uh, one in 25 pick of the week. There you go. At rank five, we have Uncanny X Men 266. This is, of course, the Gambit book that we talked about. 27 uh, copies sold, $594 for CGC 9.8, and $139 is the fair market value raw of this book. Ascensia 22, the J. Scott Campbell. Torpedo, com- Torpedo Comics Hidden Mail in Exclusive Drew. Okay. Most of the best variant covers on the market are the ones that drifted by most casual collectors' radars. Is this book took a lot of work and patience to obtain. Fans of the Essencia series had to collect coupons from books 13 through 17 and mail them in for a secret J. Scott Campbell cover. This promotion had significant delays halting production for nearly a year 
This week marks the distribution of the long-awaited cover. It quickly hit the aftermarket and started to hit new all-time highs with each sale, with popularity that will likely continue to grow. With an estimated print run of 380 issues, it's that much more desirable. We tracked 14 copies in the secondary market, high sale of $350, and the fair market value being at least 286 bucks. I wouldn't have had the patience for that. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. That's crazy. Doom number one, the Audi Granoff, 47 copies of that one on the secondary market. $90 for a CGC 9.8, Rawls for 22 bucks. Oh, I, I talked about this prison cover. Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider number one, Jenny Frizen version one in 100. Beautiful cover. Nine copies of the secondary market. High sale of exactly double ratio, 200 bucks. Near uh, fair market value, 167. Sensational She-Hulk Volume 2, Number 2. Taylor Swift single-handedly propelled Dazzler Comics into the spotlight, except it wasn't Swift that did anything. It was a simple rumor that she would cameo in the Deadpool and Wolverine movie as the mutant that made the books take off. This book is experiencing the same fuel on the heels of the next Swift rumors. According to a few leaks, Marvel has been in talks with Swift to take on the role of the blonde Phantom, a little-known heroine from Golden Age Comics. The problem is, her first appearance was in 1946's All Select Comics 11, which is both hard to find and already $1,800. <laughs> a confirmation of Taylor playing this blonde bombshell will surely spike values. Budget conscientious collectors turn to this more modern issue featuring her first appearance in comics since that Golden Age appearance. Granted, it's only a two-page cameo of her, an older woman called Wheezy. However, in issue four, it's revealed that she's the reta retired hero known as the Blonde Phantom and features flashbacks of her alter ego in action. Have we not also heard that Sydney Sweeney was going to be the Blonde Phantom? There you go. I thought I heard that as well. We tracked 59 copies, $115 for CGC 9.8, and this book shot up to 10 bucks from a dollar book. And it ranked 10. Mad Max, Fury Road, Furiosa, number one, 18 books sold, high sale of $124 for CGC 9.8, and Rawls going for more than $21. At rank 11, we have The New Mutants, number 98, the first Deadpool, which moved 22 copies and sold a high sale of $1,400 for CGC 9.8. Um, <clears throat> Rawls going for around 420 bucks. Probably still room to grow there. Um, at rank 12, we have X-Men 185, selling about 21 copies. Uh, Raw's at three bucks a piece for a fine. That's not bad. Um, this is a horseman for a cop apocalypse uh, spec here. Um, so we've got some, a Gambit appearance, etc. So all about X-Men 97. There you go. I, at rank 13, we have The Authority, number one, um, which is spiking because it's getting a limited series from DC. Um, I read some Authority back in the day. Um, this one sold 12 copies um, with a high sale of 265 for a CGC 9.8. Um, most of them sell them for around 40 bucks, the Raws. At rank 14, we have X-Men 24, selling 20 copies. We're all around 17 bucks uh, slabs of, for going for 237. This is also X-Men 97, and this is um, Death of Gambit. Well, from 97, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. So this is a Rogue and Gambit cover. It's because of that, sold 20 mm. copies. Uh, we have an, just like that X Men '97 second print of two, where he's fading out, but it's kind of a recreation of this book. I got it. Okay. At rank 15, we have X Men, or we have the Amazing Spider-Man 50, the Greg Capullo version, one in 100. It's only sold 12 copies, but it's um, pretty sweet. Capullo doing Spidey on a cover, and um. Looks really nice. 96 bucks for Raw. Hasn't been slabbed yet. It's too new. 
Um, but uh, I think the high sale was 190 bucks for a for a near mint raw. Um, but it's it's a it's a pretty cover for sure. It is definitely Capullo does good work. At uh, rank 16, um, we have X Men 53. Uh, this is also an X Men 97 joint. Uh, this is a uh, first onslaught. And so we have 29 copies selling, 15 for raw slab going for around 182 bucks. At rank 17, we have Wolverine 75, which sold 34 copies. Raw's going for 10. We got and, some lenticular on this cover too. Oh yeah, it's got the little holographic uh, mm-hmm. cover there. Um, this is after Magneto yanked all the ad. Mantium from Wolverine's body. Many, many wondered how he would maintain his ferocity without his claws. Well, this book answered that, introducing his bone claws. So the first appearance of bone claws. 34 copies. <laughs> um, X-Men 97, number one, the Todd Knock regular issue comes in at rank 18, of course, based on the surprise success of the series. Uh, 38 units. So well, maybe not surprised. Probably everybody knew it was going to do well. Um, but me. Eh. Uh, Raw's for 16. And uh, Slab's going for 150. 150. Uh, all the way down at number 19 is the 1 in 25 ratio Doom number 1. Um, not moving as much or as high. Or, you know, Only selling for 30 bucks for 1 in 25. Only 29 copies moving, based in, with the 200 and some that sold for the first issue. So quite a surprise there. Um, so um, not get a that great, cover A. <laughs> not a great one in 25. And rounding out the top 20, we have another Doom. This is a limited to 300 Secret Wars 10 homage. Only sold 11 copies. Uh, but the Rawls are going for a hundred bucks, uh, just because of scarcity. So, heck yeah! So some good stuff there. Absolutely. Speaking of good stuff, Drew, it's time to head over for our sneak peek at next week. I'm going to head over to Lunar Distributions, pull up June the fourth, and see what's releasing, and see what we can suss out and find as the books that you have to make sure you pick up on that day because they're going to be the next Doom number one. I mean, Batman 148 is heating up mm. we got more more bat versus bat this is the finale so this is going to be a, a good one depending on what happens some nice covers here too yeah Yasmin Putri is a nice one we got another retread trade, trade paperback of Court of Owls yeah Draw that out again. Sweeney Boo doing a Birds of Prey. Francisco Fancavilla doing a nice Birds of Prey. For issue 10. Sixth issue of Neo before Zod. So My Adventures with Superman. Um, okay. Looks all ag on the A cover, but not the B cover. So, but also back on the C cover. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So we're going with all ag based on two out of three. Josie Campbell, Pablar Collar, Gavin Guidry. Yeah, not your A team creators either. So, Poison Ivy just doing some amazing cover work. Yeah, Holy Frank smokes! Frank Cho still doing great. Whoever W. Scott Forbes is DC Pride one is a good one. But that, just that, well, that's the cover B. That's the uh, Chris Boccolo. That one's awesome. Is, are they reissuing Prez? Yeah, we caught, we, we caught that in a preview and went, what? But they're just reissuing it because we got a presidential election coming up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Suicide Squad kills the Arkham, kill Arkham Asylum. Five of five, that one's. You do love King your shark, shark covers. Yeah, I do like my shark covers, and I like that Ralphie L. Albuquerque cover, See the Best. 
speaking of another iteration, we've got another Watchman. Now, oh, and uh, the Boy Wonder, which I hated. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. Yeah. Cool to see Bear Pirate Viking Queen um, go to a second pr- printing. I'm over on June 5th, yeah. just in case. For our image items and our items coming out on the 5th. He came on the show and did a nice interview with Jason, so we appreciate that. Absolutely. Interesting name, even more interesting book. Yeah. So it's selling well, which is cool to, cool to see. Falling in Love on the Path to Hell, number one, Jerry Duggan. This is the uh, feudal Japan meets the Old West. Yeah. Johnny Viable and his terse friends <coughs> is the number one. That's the second printing. So that came out. Oh, okay. That already yeah. happened. That's a dope cover, though. That is an angry Johnny. Mammoth number one. Um, Mad Cave. Mad Cave. Oh, so Precious Metal was actually a little bird spinoff. Oh, okay. Interesting. Scarlet is a G.I. Joe. Yes, and yes, she is. The next chapter of a code name G.I. Joe begins here with Shayna Scarlet O'Hara. Oh, I like that that Transformers cover, a connecting cover. Very cool. It's really cool. Cygnus with an awesome cover for its fifth issue. That is really cool. Yeah, it's done some fun stuff, hasn't it, with covers? Yeah. And the aftermarket's, you know, rewarded them. Oh my goodness, look at that Walking Dead cover. That Tedesco cover D. That's neat. Saturday evening post one. I don't even see it. Where am I looking? Second to last bubble. Walking Dead Deluxe cover D. The Julian Totino? Yeah, yeah, I like that. I just think it's really good and it's different than they usually do the covers. I think it's oh yeah, good. it is different. Yeah. It's, Who is that I, supposed to be? I forget what's her face. She died. The blonde. Dang. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. White tree. The, she died out of order from the series. Yep, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was just about yeah. to say. Yeah. White trees one shot going to a second print. I love to see a one shot going to a second print. So that's awesome. Chip Zdarsky book for Image. For sure. Um, that collects white trees one and two in that. That's awesome. I'm heading over to our good friends at Previews Worlds dot previewsworld.com not to be confused with marvel free previews which you keep <laughs> for some odd reason messing with <laughs> and you know we see the image now has its it's 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 a, it's rightful place back yeah and <clears throat> look at the image first you know a yeah. new a new crop of image first some good some old some new um i don't want to buy a bundle of 20 but uh it's good to know we can walk into a shop and pick up a an image first. I wonder if there's still a buck. It's a good question. Um, they would have to be, I would think. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that hack slash. Yeah, that's a must own right there. Ice Cream Man is a image first. That's fantastic. I mean, you really can't go wrong with any of them. There's a reason they're being reissued, right? They. Heading down to our boom books. Profane number one, Peter Milligan. Pine and Mary back finishes up. That took a turn. I thought it was like a fun little detective couple solving crimes. And we're doing like sex call, cannibal, ritual sacrifice stuff. And I'm like, what the hell happened? <laughs> like you do. <laughs> I like this. I'm down into Marvel. 
they're doing their AM ASM 51. They do their, you know, of course, Disney covers. They've got the Dazzler Minnie Mouse cover. So good one to have. Yeah, good call. Is Helverine going to be a thing? Well, they're on issue four in our preview, so uh, we'll see who wins that war. Facsimile for Godzilla number one. Or no, that's a poster. Midnight Suns gets a blood hunt crossover. Yeah. Ultimates number one, Drew. Do we need this Ultimates number one, Denise Camp? What is that? So they've, they've got listed as Ultimates number one here. And which, which, where is it before? I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in <clears throat> Ultimate Spider-Man. I don't see it. Where is it? Uh, it's it's right after Ultimate Spider-Man number two, fourth print. And am I in the wrong place? Did I not go to the right? You, yeah, because you. We are on June fifth. God oh, damn it! Two, Start two, over, Kyle. Let's let's go to the beginning. All right, let's head on up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm image. Kidding. <laughs> I'll catch up. God damn it! And start the podcast over. That's ridiculous. Okay, so I wonder why I didn't see pro- profane, and I was like, "Wonder where's profane at?" Yeah. Right there in the boom, the boom books. So and now we're all the way down to Marvel. Ultimate. Yep. And I want to catch up to the conversation that we were having where I was confused. Ultimate's number one. Yes. Yes. So this could be good, right? I thought I'd yeah. read it, but I must have just read like a preview in one of the books. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this could be good. Well, a bunch of the other ultimate stuff has popped, so there's a very good chance this one will. And of course, a well, very got... good chance, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and you got to go cover A. That's yep. the ones that have been popping. And of course, you have to pick up What If Venom number five because it's got the What If Venom Moon Knight jump around. I don't have to. That Chris, uh, Chris Campana variant of that is very cool. I actually like that stunning version of Venom on the top mm-hmm. as Moon Knight. I like that X Men 35 with the pushing of Professor Xavier and the chairs. And we know the end of the era of the Uncanny X Men 700. Of course, it's a $10 book for 700. Ouch. So just FYI, the Insignia variant is pretty cool as well. And there is a giant wraparound cobblish variant with a bunch of people in it. And those tend to always do very well. Yeah. Pretty much a Where's Waldo. So just no X-Men 35 is a big thing. Down into Dinamate or Dynamite. Not a... So beyond the pale down there in the back half books is Christopher M. Gard and Tomas Aria about a war correspondent. That's cool. For Vietnam. That could be maybe interesting. Heck yeah. Could be. And we have Coins of Judas, the Gambler, which is only a two issue book. Um, from Band of Bards, that publisher, which I'm not familiar with. Mm-mm. Cult of the Lamb, number one, from Oni Press. Oh, Oni. This yeah, is some... a video game tie-in, I think. Okay. Yeah. With uh, Devolver Digital. What's that? It's a, it's a uh, publisher. Okay. In partnership with Devolver Div- Digital and Massive Monsters, acclaimed writer Alex Pacnadel and Eisner Award-nominated artist Troy Little comes a deviously delightful 
heretic smashing excursion into the sprawling cosmology of the worldwide BAFTA nominated video game phenomenon that IG call, IGN calls adorably demonic. <laughs> Cult of the Lamb. I'm not real familiar with it. Hmm. Uh, Mad Cave gives us Mammoth number one from Paul Tobin and Arjuni Sassini. Um, looks like a big kaiju y looking thing. Monstrous Phantom that uh, disappears for decades at a time is back. I like the cover though. Looks yeah. pretty good. You're going to like in the cover. Gun Honey Collision Course number one. We get that Chew variant cover. Oh, but yeah. But it's $14. But yeah. it's a great cover. I'm Gun Honeyed out. <sighs> How can you be? Well, is that still Titan? Well, I've is... clicked off of it. I'm not sure. Uh-oh. I wonder if Titan was still doing those. Uh, Hard Case Crime. Yeah, that's Titan. Print. You talked about mammoth. You're right about that sickness. Did you like the uh, the A or the B? Which one did you like the most for the sickness? For what? The sickness covers. I like the A. Yeah, I did too. Uh, Blood Moon gives us Wicked Tales. Blood Moon Comics LLC. I'm sorry, gives us Wicked Tales. <laughs> This is Christoph Rodriguez and uh, Giuseppe Della. It's their creator's debut. At the, okay, and their imp- oh, in their imprint, Watch Out Studio. Mm-hmm. So it's a three t- three tale um anthology, horror anthology. That does it for you. <laughs> They got a lot of covers. All right, Drew. Find anything else? Nope. That's that's plenty to choose from. Yeah, absolutely. This is the point of the podcast where I asked Drew to pick his pick of the week. What's the one book that you got to pick up? Because like we saw with Doom, some of these books just pop, and we need to know that before we pay the secondary prices on these things. Well, I was vacillating between a few. Um, I mean, I was looking at the Ultimates, which was kind of a slam dunk, and then I was looking at Beyond the Pale. Um, but I'm going to go, ultimately, I'm going to go with uh, Mad Cave Studios Mammoth Number 1, based a lot on that Arjuni Susini cover, which I really love. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, Mammoth Number 1 from Mad yeah. Cave. I've, of course, got X-Men 35 looking up here that what if Venom with your uh, Boy Moon Nine on it, Amazing Spider-Man. Do we want that Disney cover with Dazzler? Will that one pop? But I am going to take the slam dunk with Ultimates number one on that one. Six dollar book. Um, following the greatness of all these Ultimates book, I'm just not missing out. Okay, yeah. Well, it. I mean, <clears throat> my book is a regularly priced five dollar book, so there you go. <laughs> it's really not a big jump anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for tackling with Drew and myself as we head through our sneak peek at this week as we dig through all the books in the secondary market, all the stuff coming out in stores, and all the things in your free Marvel previews. We appreciate you guys for tagging along with us. If you want more from us, head on over to patreon.com, find comics for fun and profit. Be part of the discussion and just know that we're going to do some really cool reviews here soon. And those are, of course, going to hit first for our Patreons. We thank you so much, and for Drew and for myself, see ya.